In this presentation, we're going to look at the general rules of probability. And the first example we're going to look at is the complement rule. A superscript C is read as the complement of A, and it means that A does not occur. So here's our rules. The probability A does not occur, probability of A complement, is 1 minus the probability A does occur, probability of A probability A occurs is 1 minus the probability A doesn't occur. So if the probability it's going to rain tomorrow is 30 percent, the probability it won't rain would be 70 percent because those notions are complements. So here's an example. We have seven red marbles, five blue marbles, and four green marbles in a bag. And we're asked to pick one at random. And first we're going to find the probability the marble is red. And second, find the probability the marble is not red. So hopefully you can see that those are examples of complementary events. So if we're looking for the situation a red marble is selected, how many red marbles are there? Seven red marbles out of how many total? Seven plus five is 12 plus four more is 16. So we have seven winners divided by 16 total or a probability of seven sixteenths for selecting a red. And a complement is the event that a red marble is not selected. Now using our rule, we can say the probability of a complement is 1 minus the probability of a, 1 minus 7 sixteenths, which of course is 9 sixteenths. But there's another way to look at this. Probability a red marble is not selected would mean it's either one of these guys, five blue marbles, or one of these guys, four green marbles. Putting those together, we get 9 sixteenths. So the probability of not getting a red, 1 minus the probability of getting a red, demonstrating the complement rule. Okay, if we're going to select a card from a standard 52 card deck, the first question is to find the probability that the card is a diamond. The second question is to find the probability that the card is not a diamond. Again, these are complementary events. To answer this question, we have to think about how many diamonds there are in a deck. How many cards total could we be selecting? So 13 diamonds out of a total of 52. So the probability of getting a diamond, 13 out of 52, or 1 in 4. The event a complement is the event a diamond is not selected. So if it's not a diamond, what are our possibilities there? Using the rule, probability of a complement, 1 minus the probability of a, 1 minus 13 32s, excuse me, 52s, which is 39 52s, which reduces to 3 quarters. Now, of course, you could also recognize that if a diamond is not selected, it's either a clubs, a spades, or a hearts. And indeed, there are 39 out of 52 cards that fit that condition. But again, getting a diamond, not getting a diamond, complementary events, the rule holds. Okay, our next rule is the OR rule. And looking at this Venn diagram, you are either in event A or in event B. And we want to find the likelihood of that happening. The issue is how do we handle this overlap, A intersect B? How are we going to generate a rule that will allow us to uh, make sense of that? And here's our basic rule. The probability of A or B requires us to include the probability of A plus the probability of B. But you will notice we included A and B twice. So we have to throw that out because it's been double counted. So our general rule, probability of A or B, probability of A plus the probability of B, minus the probability of A and B, and here is an equivalent version of that rule using set notation. So here's our question. Seven red marbles, five blue marbles, and four green marbles in a bag. One marble is selected. Find the probability that is either red or blue. So probability red or blue. Looking at our numbers, seven reds, five blues. Let's think about how that probability is going to work. So the formal rule is probability of red plus the probability of blue minus the overlap. But what's happening here with the overlap? How many marbles are both red and blue? Well, as you can see, red we have 7 out of 16. Blue we have 5 out of 16. Red and blue, 0. No marble is both red and blue. So adding those together, we get 12 out of 16, which reduces to 3 fourths. So this is an example of a mutually exclusive set of events. 
A marble cannot be both red and blue at the same time. There is no overlap. So we don't need to concern ourselves with this part because it's going to go to zero. Which gives us a modified rule. If A and B are mutually exclusive, which means that you cannot happen both events simultaneously, so the set A and B is empty. And if A and B is empty, certainly the probability of A and B would have to be zero. So that gives us our modified rule for mutually exclusive sets, which tells us the probability of A and B is the probability of A plus the probability of B. But let's take a look at a situation that's not mutually exclusive. So again, we're selecting a card at random from a standard 52 card deck. And we want the probability the card is a diamond or a queen. A diamond or a queen. 13 diamonds out of 52 cards. Four queens out of 52 cards. But there is one that is in both sets, namely the queen of diamonds. The queen of diamonds is both a queen and a diamond. So our rule will be probability of diamond or queen, probability of diamond plus the probability of queen minus the overlap. There is an overlap here. These sets are not mutually exclusive, so I must consider the and part of the problem. Diamond 13 out of 52, queen 4 out of 52, minus the overlap, minus 1 out of 52. And you can see we get 17 minus 1, 16 out of 52, which reduces to 4 thirteenths. Our next rule is the multiplication rule, or the AND rule. And to do this, we have to make sense of this notation. P, B, vertical line A. We read that as the probability of B given A. It means the probability B occurs knowing that A has already occurred. And with that information, we give ourselves the general rule. The general rule for AND is probability of A and B will be the probability of A times the probability of B knowing that A has already occurred. Probability of A times the probability of B given A. So here's our example. A coin is flipped and a die is rolled, and we want the probability of getting a heads and a six. Well, we can give ourselves a sample space. The uh, coin could be heads, so heads one, heads two, heads three, heads four, heads five, heads six, or tails, tails one, tails two, tails three, tails four, tails five, tails six. So we've generated all 12 members of the sample space, and the question is how many of them are heads and a six, and certainly this is a key idea for us. So what do we get? The probability of heads and six is indeed one out of twelve. One correct, one out of twelve total. But we can also recognize our rule. Probability of heads and six, probability of heads, times the probability of six given heads. Probability of heads is a half. Probability of getting a six knowing you have a heads is the same thing as the probability of getting a six. Those events are independent knowledge of getting heads in no way, shape, or form influences the likelihood of getting six. So heads and six, heads times six given heads, which is the same as the probability of heads times six, a half times a sixth, which is a twelfth. So two events are independent if the occurrence of one of the events gives us no information about whether or not the other event will occur. That is, the events have no influence on each other. And if we have independent events, probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B. But in general, probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B given A. Okay, one last question here. If two cards are selected from a deck, what is the probability both are diamonds? Not independent. If you get a diamond on the first, that'll change the likelihood on the second. Diamonds on the first and diamonds on the second. Probability of diamonds on the first times diamonds on the second given diamonds on the first. Diamonds on the first is 13 out of 52. Diamonds on the second given diamonds on the first, 12 out of 51. Putting those together, what do we get? We get 13 out of 52 times 12 out of 51. So knowing we had a diamond on the first, 13 diamonds out of 52, but now there's one diamond missing. We're doing this without replacement. There are only 12 diamonds left out of how many cards left. Again, one card is missing out of our 52. So we now have 12 out of 51, 13 out of 52, times 12 out of 51, the probability of diamonds on the first two draws, 0 .0588.